That's a nice cut. But we got one more upgrade to do to our planer next. I'm Rick, and this the heck up, you stinking booster. Grab <laughs> that for your sanity! <laughs> this is the shack. Hello and welcome. Hey, if you're new to the channel and first time stopping by, thank you so much for taking some of your time out to view. Always ask that you would consider subscribing. If you do, ring the ding 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 that bell down there so you're notified when my videos do come out. Yes, that planer is doing, I, I mean, unbelievable. I am, it's been three days since we upgraded from the factory cutting head to the new bird shielding cutting head. And I, I mean, the first time it went through, how well it did, I was, it was like reinventing the wheel. Seriously, I was completely blown away. I had no idea it would be that well. So if you want to check out a video how I did that, check up here. But in this video, we're going to do one more update for our planer. We're going to install this Wixie Digital Planer readout. Let's get started. Check in that description below. I have links to where I got my Wixley Digital Planer readout and where I got my Bird Shelix cutting head from. Great deals. I mean, you know me, I always look for the best deal. There's that. There's that, and we should have instructions right there. Put all this aside, and let's see exactly what we have to do. Okay, all the hardware, no batteries. I know there's batteries that go in here, so let me see what they are. Ah, there it goes. Okay, we're gonna need two AAA batteries. Let me go get those so we're ready for this installation. Now I have my two AAA batteries. So let's go over to the planer and start the installation process. Now always when you work on your machine, regardless if you're doing anything here or just replacing this, just be cautious. Make sure it's unplugged. It's unplugged. We're safe to work on this. In the instructions, they don't say anything about the next step or what I'm going to show you. But to make it easier to get this on there, line it up and do what we have to do. On the back, there's a little tension spring we're going to lift it, pull it off, and we're going to slide this out so we can work on this without any obstructions. The instructions are pretty self-explanatory. They're really not too bad. So you go through here, you find your model because this will fit most models. You got most models. We have DeWalt only, Delta only, another Delta model only, but we're going to go follow these step by step. So first thing we got to do, the little reader down here, the little red tab, we have to remove these two screws. There it goes. With everything off of our mounting bracket, it makes it much easier to maneuver, to get around and do what we have to do to mount this to our planer. They suggest you get a straight edge lay on your plate here. You never want to mount this lower than the plate. You want to make sure that this little foot right here is level to your plate here. I happen to use my woodpecker square because they are very precise. This is an adjustment screw. You screw it in. See, it's still, still too high. And now you see the gap here. I can raise that up. Right there. Hits right there. I think that's good. That's good right there. With that set, the next thing they say is to align it to the edge here. So you make sure it's plumb. Okay? But with my square, if I'm off this side, you see how it's a gap. If I'm off this side, there's a gap. So I'm just going to bring this over till it's perfect right there. So that looks good. But before we peel the backing off and stick it to here, I'm going to take some alcohol. I'm going to clean this real quick because I want to have a very good adhesion. Now before I stick that on, I got some rubbing alcohol and a little wipe and I'm just going to make sure this is nice and clean. Yeah, it needed to be clean. Now it's got a clean surface, we can put this on. The instructions say to line up the edge here with this. So I'll do my best 
try to line it right there. So I think we're good to go. This is where it's going to end up. So let me peel the back off and let's stick this on. There it goes too. So we're going to keep it pushed down to the ground so it stays level. I'm going to get this real close to the edge. Push secure. Now I am going to put two screws because I want to make sure this does not come loose in the future. I want it to stay here permanently. Now it's going to seem a little weird, but I'm going to use my self centering bit to drill the initial hole. I'll use the bit included. That gets me a centered right there. To use the screws provided, you're going to need a 7 millimeter wrench or socket or something. I'm using a 7 millimeter nut driver. We're going to put these in and attach it because these are like self tapping. Get that out. Same on the bottom. Oh man, that is secure. You want this bracket to go on this way because that way you can adjust this. Stock screws are too small, that's why you need this oblong like washer. Screws go through there. Those go on like that. Whoops. And that's how it goes on. For this process, I'm going to get my little tip that's magnetic. So now that screw won't fall off. It's going to make it easier for me to put this on. I just go like that. It makes it so much easier with that like, magnetic tip. There we go. I'm going to leave it loose because I'm not sure how tight I want it just yet. There we go, much better. Okay, now let's put on the readout. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to slide in, make sure this is behind here, slide in the measure. Let's see, this goes up, slide it back through. There we go, all the way through. Grab your spring here, lift up and hook it back on the tab there. That's done. Now the next thing we have to do, we'll take off this little screw here. Come on. There we go. I think you need a finer tip. Long screw. Didn't think it was that long. Okay. Oh, that has to go like that. So we're going to put this on. And reattach it. Still moves. Takes a supplied Phillips screw and nut. The Phillips screw goes on the outside here. The nut goes on the inside because that little channel there prevents it from turning. So that makes it nice. We can use this, get it in there. Now to set this before I do anything, I set my planer at 1 8, lowered it down. So it bottomed out. I think that's close enough right there, one eighth. Now I'm going to take this. Right there's the eighth inch mark, mark right there. That's where I want my eighth inch. Now I'm going to tighten this up. Right there. Perfect, I just see the line. Now, time to insert my batteries. Okay, batteries, this is on now. Now I'm gonna crank this up till it reaches about three quarter. Right there should be three quarters. Okay, I just got a little piece of wood. I'm just gonna check it, because I just wanna make sure it's reading close to what I want. I am right at 0 0.730. I just want to get that to match this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this piece of wood, I'm going to run it through, do maybe a quarter turn, just until I can hear it taking off a little bit on this side. Flip it over, take a little bit off this side. I'm going to mic it, and then we're going to, and we can calibrate this. And to make sure, I'm just going to do a little line on that side, 
do a little line on that side that way when it does go down just a little bit just enough to take that off I know I've gotten a little bit off both sides okay see so we got just a shade off a little bit on both sides I am about 0.7 Looks like 11.12. Let me just do it a hair, see if I can get it down to 0.710. Oh, perfect. 0.710. Okay. Gonna lift this up and slide this in there. Drop it down. I have it on inches. Yeah, inches right there. We're gonna push this to zero. There we go, three, four seconds. There you go, see zero, zero. Lift this up, slide it out, drop it down. And it is 0.705, it should be 0.710. Okay. So I went, added one, so it's 0 0.10 and that's perfect. There you go, shut it off. Now when I turn it back on, it should be the same right there 0 0.710 dead on and that 0 0.005 isn't going to harm me too much that I can deal with so let's run again and we'll check the depth so let's take this down to Point seven zero, and just see where it runs at. Getting a little dark. And finish this up, right there. It's maybe a point zero five off. That's pretty darn close. So what I'm going to do, because this takes a little bit of getting used to, it's point seven zero. But if I keep turning it down, it turns a little bit. There it goes. Now I want to back it off till it goes back 70 right there. Let me run it through again. Well, you probably can't see that, but that's probably a 0 .005 below. It's just a hair below it's 0 .70. So it's probably 0 .6995. So there's a little bit of fluctuation there, but that's close. That's really close. Not too bad of an insulation, and yes, I, I already know I'm going to get the comments. It's not that accurate, it's this and that, all these negative comments. It, it's fine. The purpose for me, especially when I do my flags, <laughs> for me, because this lumber came from church pews that were left outside for five years, there's a lot of weathering characteristics on the wood now. I want to keep that characteristic, but I want to also get it down to a point where I kind of have some of the natural wood coming through along with some of the natural weathering. This is going to be super helpful to me because I can literally take it down ten thousandth of an inch maybe and just plane a little bit more and it's like maybe just a hair more, maybe another ten thousandth, plane it down and that's where I want. I still have some of the weathering yet bringing out some of the natural wood. So for me, it's super helpful. Other people, they may say it's no good because it's not accurate. Because yes, you're going to have to know the characteristics of your machine. Kind of get the feel for it after a while. Because as you saw, 0 0.710, I could still turn the handle a little bit until it clicked up. Because it only reads a certain amount, but there's a little bit of play in there. So you're going to have to understand your characteristics. You want it a little bit high, a little bit proud, or a little bit less proud. You know, you have to understand the characteristics when you crank it up. And then maybe just back it off a hair and bring it back down, find that happy medium. But at least I can see, because it's hard to judge if you're actually moving the cutter head up and down. If you don't have something like this, you just kind of guess and just tap on Like, I hope it's enough and run my material through and it's either not enough. And I do it again and I maybe take off too much. I'm like, I just lost the characteristics of my wood. Ah, and I'll waste that piece. This gives me a little more precision and I can actually see if it is moving or not. That's the main thing for me. So it's a win for me. Uh, yes, there is a little bit of play in there. Close, very close, 
0.005 to me that's extremely accurate compared to just guessing if I'm tapping with just the normal measuring increments this is great so I have to get some other things done I am leaving for Japan in the morning I'm hoping to get this video out so thank you so much for watching be blessed take back check about it for your sanity I'm going gone see you next video we upgraded the factory cutting head to a nerd to a nerd <laughs> god okay